All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Wayne's Work Vlog here. How you doing, Rocker Pat? This video is gonna be a little tidbit of info for you and me both. If you're trying to get that original steering column in the 54 Bel Air to work with that Mustang 2 front end, this is what you're gonna need to do it. This should work on 49 to 54 Chevy pickups and cars as well. The length may be different between the car and the trucks, but for all the 49 to 54 sedans, coupes, etc., this should work with any Mustang 2 that's using the 26 spline steering rack. I don't know if the power is different than the manual, but from what I've seen, as long as you're using the Pinto rack that comes with all the Mustang 2s, it should have an output shaft kind of angled at the frame rail. It'll be a 26 spline 9 16 output. So I'm gonna put this here, go ahead and uh, pause it, write this down. Take a screenshot, save it to your photos, whatever. This is exactly what you're gonna need. I'm gonna go over each one and why and how you're gonna use them. And then in the next video, I'll be installing everything and you'll be able to see how everything works. To begin with, I'm going to uh, draw exactly what we're gonna do here on this and then uh, show you each part and why you need it. So what we have on our cars is there's like a frame rail. Let's say we're looking at it from the top front. So it gets bigger as it comes at you. And then you've got your steering rack under here. And this guy's coming out at an angle like this. And it's really close to the frame here and close to the motor mount, which um, you may have to notch the frame here. You may have to notch your motor mount but essentially you need to get clearance around it for one of these guys to slide on to that output shaft of the Mustang too. Then if you notice the frame kind of goes under the firewall here and then uh, the firewall goes up and then you have like this teardrop shaped hole somewhere about there where the steering shaft is going to pop through like that. So you've got to get this guy up, over, and around without interfering with everything. So what you're going to want to do is get your steering column in the car and lined up with your seat the way you want it, uh, close enough to the seat to where it's comfortable, but far enough away where you can still get in and out of the car without any trouble. And then you're going to mark your steering column where it's coming through the firewall. Then pull the shaft down and cut off where your line is or, or pull it all the way out and cut it off, whichever is easier. And then what you're gonna have is your firewall ending like this and you're gonna have just a little bit of that shaft sticking out like that, okay? If you wanna retain the shifter, cut the sleeve right here and then leave the shaft sticking out a little bit. It is three quarters of an inch, but you're gonna wanna cut here all the way through and then cut the outer sleeve here so that you have this sticking out a little bit. Then you're going to take from our list, the three quarter inch inside diameter bearing with a one and nine sixteenth outside diameter. And you're going to slide it over that three quarter inch shaft and into the outer sleeve and then peen the sleeve, crimp the edges if you have to, or even drill a little hole and put like a set screw in there just to hold this guy in there. There's not any real tension on it. It's just gonna be side to side. So it should hold itself in with maybe even a little bit of tacky glue or something and then push it inside that sleeve and then you'll have this three quarter inch shaft sticking out you want about i'd say at least an inch sticking out of there maybe give it an inch and a half to be fair and then you're going to shave down the sides of this guy until it makes what's called a three quarter inch because it's a three quarter inch shaft all right round and you're going to shave off two sides of it to make a three quarter inch double D shaft, which looks like that. That'll allow you to take one of the two three quarter inch double D to three quarter inch double D U joints, which I have here. There's a double D on that end and a double D on this end. And you're going to attach it to the protruding shaft coming out of the original steering column. Attach it right there. So it's gonna be up here coming out of the firewall. All right, so we got that one there. Then you're gonna take 15 inches of your 18 inch by three quarter inch double D shaft, which I have here, cut off 15 inches of that. 
and it is going to attach to the end of this double DU joint coming out of the firewall and angling down at an angle like this to get around the frame rail, okay? You're then going to slip one of your three quarter inch inside diameter lock collars. Then you slide one of these up onto the shaft. You take your three quarter inch time joint, slide it onto the shaft. And then you take your next three quarter inch inside diameter lock collar and slide it onto the shaft. And you will tighten these up to where you can mount this heim joint like so over to a tab i guess or weld it uh, a lot of people put a nut on both sides of this guy one on each side with a tab and they weld the tab to the frame that way you can adjust this thing up or down or left or right whichever way you put that tab in is where how you're going to be able to change the angle of this and this will keep this from moving because down here underneath this motor mount it's going to come down to the other three quarter inch double d by three quarter inch double d u joint that we have here three quarter inch three quarter inch it's going to go on the end of that 15 inch shaft under the lock collars Oop, right there it's going to point towards the input shaft of the mustang 2 down here at the frame rail. Now you have three inches left. I believe all the forums said you're only gonna need a two inch piece. You have a three inch piece left, so knock an inch off of this. Then take that two inch piece and connect it between the three quarter double D to three quarter double D to the three quarter double D to nine sixteenths 26 spline. And that is what actually attaches to the Mustang 2 shaft here with the little splines on it. And because of the fact that you're going from the firewall mount down at an angle with a heim joint holding it to the frame and then another set of heim joints going to here to that guy, it kicks around the frame behind your exhaust header and straight into the Mustang. So I'm going to put a picture up right now. of what it should look like when everything's done. We will be installing this in my next video, maybe a video or two. I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now. Went ahead and bought a truck so I can get around. I've been fixing everything on the truck just so it's road safe and worthy. Uh, might do a video on a few things on that. So go ahead and write all this down. I personally don't give a shit about classic performance products, CPP. I've heard mixed reviews, good and bad. And Speedway just resells CPP products with $20 to $50 added on for their cost. So if you're going to get a CPP product anyway, get it from CPP from their eBay page because then you don't pay for shipping and you don't have to wait for their shipping department to contact you to complete your order. You're not, you can't just make an order on their website. You have to fill in the order and send it off and then they contact you when they're ready to fill the order and get your payment info. So go to their eBay page uh, or search CPP part numbers. These are going to cost you $50 each or more from CPP. These are, who knows, these are, Jesus Christ. But I got all these on eBay. Uh, these are $20 each. So I got 60 bucks there. This thing was like 18 bucks shipped. This was $9. These were like $4 each. These were like $4. So you can get all this stuff for less than the kits that are out there for 150, 200 bucks. And if you buy it piece by piece from CPP, it's gonna be two, 250 anyway. So like I said, that's 60, 80, less than $100. I have everything I need. So click that subscribe button. Click the little bell next to it. Click the like button if you liked. And as always guys, Keep on modding.